Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome back to episode 11 of our Let's Play series of War in the East 2, Stalingrad to Berlin scenario. In this episode, we're going to be going through the second half of turn 6 as the Soviet player, and we've already done our ground support actions from Leningrad down through Smolensk. Now we're going to continue down the front line to continue executing our movements, and then we will close up the turn and see where and how the Germans may be counterattacking. So we left off in last episode right around this pocket, and as you see, we were trying to find different areas where we can force a gap in the line and, and have some success in pushing through, and here we got to push through, here we pushed them back, so it's been going fairly well so far. I think we left off right about here. So one of the first things I want to do is see if we can actually force out this unit. They do have a fortification level of three, and we're just not going to have enough to do so. So then we'll keep looking down the line, and here um, we're actually going to take a look because we had, in the previous turn, and two episodes ago, we had taken um, our, our two units here, we had pushed down quite far, and we had brought in a few units in reserve um, to try to hold this supply line to these units. The Germans executed a total of four attacks against us and did actually push us out of the hex. Um, we had the 148th Rifle Division holding that hex. And you see through these four attacks that they, they were quite persistent in um, attacking with different units to keep the fighting fresh. And ultimately, they were successful, and we, we suffered some heavy casualties by the time we took the fourth attack, where we lost 115 guns and 5,000 men. Um, so those were some pretty heavy losses, but because that unit held out for so long, what it means is that they were actually never able to move any reinforcements into this hex uh, to reinforce the position. Um, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to take this 8th Rifle Division and we're actually going to move this up to try to defend this line here. And then we are going to look and see, so the 132, we're going to move here. And the 37th, I'm going to move down into this hex. Might try to push back on one of these. It's only two to one odds, which just really don't feel like they're strong enough. Maybe here we can push them back. What if we did this jointly? That might work. But then again, the, the goal just has to be maintaining a supply line to reinforce these units here. So I think we might just hold out as is. Um, Right here, we probably have an opportunity, though, to push back the security force, and we route at them, which is a great victory. And then let's see if maybe we can't... No, nah, it's only one to one there. So what we're going to do is bring over this 307th. And let's see now if we can push them back, and they retreat it. So that's good. Um, we could try to move up the 74th Rifle Division, but that would be pushing them to the brink of exhaustion, and they're already at a 47 level of fatigue. This would probably get them upwards of 60, 70 fatigue, and I, I don't know that it's going to be worth it. Uh, the fact is we've now given them a situation where they have to try and reinforce the line and enter into one of our hexes that we now control. Um, and then here you see we, we've left open this gap between. I'm really not worried about them advancing um, through there. If they did, they'll easily be cut off from their own supply lines and we can finish it up later. We will take this 161st though and see if we can't break through here. And we routed that Luftwaffe Field Division. So that makes all of this a little easier. We'll then see. So that's one to one, but if we take, just want to take these two, two to one, they're on low supply, we force them back. 
So we're having some success here. And I think we'll move this unit up, this unit up, and we continue to press forward this front line. We'll take just this one unit. Let's see the fort. Yeah, they have no fortification level. So just this one unit, the... Hmm, actually, I think we're going to do the 100th Rifle Division. We're going to move and attack here. They held. Shoot. Okay. So let's now take the 237th. We'll do the same thing. Delivered attack. And they retreated. The reason we kind of split up our forces there is even though our attack was less successful, it now gives us enough movement points that we can actually move up and um, occupy that hex. And then we're going to take this tank core and this 121st rifle division. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not enough. They're on low supply, though, so maybe we just need to wait a little bit. Here... We have, so these are different color because one is a Hungarian light, di light division, the other is an Italian division. I moved this unit off the front line there, and I still feel okay about that decision. But let's see what it looks like if we attack. It's not quite two to one. And what's the fortification look like? Just one. Mm. We might have these units just hold. And again, same situation here. We're, we're employing some new tactics. I don't think we've done too much on the episode where, or excuse me, on the series where, you know, we have this open spot in our line, but we still have zone of control, which means it's, it's going to exhaust nearly all of their movement points to try to move into this hex. And even if they do, it just makes it that much easier than to cut them off from the rest of their forces. And they don't gain anything by moving up to this hex. You could argue that if they did have enough movement points, which it does not look like they will have, um, they could get to Levea Rosov, um, and that might interrupt some of our supplies here um, down this rail line. But I certainly think that is by far a worst case scenario, and even if they do interrupt the line, we'll be able to just shatter this unit by cutting them off from their own forces in the long game. So that's, that's perfectly fine in my book. Looking down here, we might, hmm, this unit is at 51 fatigue. Trying to think if we press through here, or do we try to press and continue pushing this rail line? So there it's just a little better than one to one. If we take all of these, that's three to one. What we're actually going to do is we're going to take the 305th Rifle Division and we're going to see if we can't assign to it. Um, yeah, let's assign to it this 180th Tank Brigade. And now when we take all three of these, that should be enough to force them out of that hex. And it was. And now we can move up our front line. I think hmm, this 303rd, we're now going to do this similar thing, and we're going to attach to it the 694th Anti-Tank Regiment to try to help its defense here in case they do counterattack. There's a police unit here, which isn't going to be that great on the offensive. There is a pretty high-strength infantry division there. And then they have this unit. So they they might break through here. Oh, no. I didn't even see this. The fatigue level is at 91 now on that unit. That's it's too late to move it back. That's unfortunate. So let's see if we can't do something here. Let's actually take... one of these units and move this over to help defend that hex. I'd really like to take this 25th guards, so I think we're going to do that. So we moved up the 25th guard to try to help defend that hex from potential counterattack. 
I'm gonna have to move up the supporting HQ because it's now a little further from the front line. And I th think next we will attack here. And they held. Hmm. Let's do that again over from this side and they retreat at this time. What we're going to do is we're going to move this unit up. I was hoping we might have enough movement points with some of these to actually reinforce that unit. Okay. So not to worry. We will now attack over here. It's only three to one though. Some of these units really need some rest really when we're looking at it objectively. So now I have kind of left myself a little open there. Hmm. Hmm. Over here we have quite a few. Maybe we take this motorized brigade though has, it's pretty depleted it looks like. About this mechanite core. No. There's be something we can get up there. These are all in zone of control, which is going to make it difficult. We take this rifle division. Let's take that rifle division up here. And then. might move over the 253rd Rifle Brigade as well. I'm going to reassign this from the 6th Army. So now it's part of the 40th Army. We're going to look to see... Actually, no, we're, we're going to take the 253rd. It doesn't look like there's anything that we can attach to it. I think that'll be enough just to hold the line, though. Because one of these units is a Hungarian light division, which they may be a little um, less optimistic about attacking with um, mixed forces, right? Because you have different chain of commands, you have different, I mean... Even infantry handbooks are different, right, between the two different divisions. It just adds complexity to any assault that they might try to uh, muster. And then down here, I think we just have to hold that line. We were really optimistic at the end of last turn of maybe trying to cut off this um, rail line here going north to south. But I don't know that we quite have the forces here to do it. And I think they brought in a lot of these Italian units to try to reinforce and prevent us from doing so. If we toggle the chips, I mean, we really are just one hex away here. Um, but I guess it's not going to make too much of a difference because that only affects these two hexes. But if we could get here, and particularly with this airbase, um, I think that would be helpful. We have some units that are in the rear here, like this 15th Rifle Corps. wonder if it makes sense to try to break through in this hex if we take these two units. So that's two to one against that infantry division. We're just going to hold that, I think. We're going to move this unit up, and we're going to attack there. Holy crap, yes, we're going to attack there, but we got we were held because they had a supporting unit helping them defend. So now we're going to move up this fourth guard. We need to move over our HQ to help support this. And this fourth guard, can we maybe attach some support units? Let's give it some armor. The 40th tank brigade seems to be in a better um, state right now to try to help with this assault. So we're taking the fourth guard and we're attacking here. And they retreated. Excellent. OK. 
Okay. And then this tank core, we're going to move down here. What else do we have here? Six guard. We can make it over here. We're really kind of stretching ourselves on this side, but I think this is going to be worth it if we can break through to share Oh, they held. Move this unit down. Move this unit down. So here we're just kind of re-establishing our front line, right? And before these forces get too dug in, I think we might try to push back a few of these. Yeah, so they retreat it. Can we get these guys to retreat too? Yep, so that was successful. And probably not going to have enough here. It's two to one. That I'm just going to move this one more up. We we've really kind of stretched this third guard's army, so I'm going to try to bring this unit back over a little closer to the HQ, and then we will let the um, 21st Army maintain this defensive line. Okay, that looks good. So th this is going to put a lot of pressure on them to try to defend this hex right here. Um, is there any way we can... So we can get some reinforcements there. Let's... We maybe take this 5th Mechanized core. I think we will. Because defending this hex is going to be very important. So we're going to bring that up. And that, that should help immensely. And what we're going to do now is probably assign this to the third guard army. Yep, so that now belongs there. Actually, I just need to move up our HQ here. It, it is very important that you remember to keep an eye on your HQs, which I have not been doing, it would seem, to make sure that they're in good enough contact with all your forces. So that that is kind of reestablished our front line here. And you you look, I mean this this is kind of where the scenario started, right? When we when we first began this Let's Play series, you can see these there's some remnants of our fortification levels that we had all along this line is where we had all started. Now we've pushed them back this far. Um and when we scroll out, that might not seem like much, but remember, we're only six weeks into the campaign out of a campaign that is supposed to last 131 weeks, right? That's not a meaningless distance that we've covered there. Continuing on to this front line. So this, this was where there was a lot of nervousness last episode, right? Is they had built up here and here a number of Panzer divisions. And now it looks like a few of them, they have actually moved to their rear. Um, but there were a total, I think it was six or seven Panzer divisions just in this little pocket alone. Um, and because I'm, I'm certain that they have not just disappeared, uh, we are going to maintain a, a state of um, awareness <laughs> to the situation. And we're probably just going to hold this little pocket even a little longer. We might try to take advantage of a couple of these on the front line. The fact like this Arab special perp, oh, excuse me. Arab Special Purpose Battalion just has a combat value of 0.2, right? It, it seems worthwhile to force them out of that hex uh, to prevent them from building up the fortification level there. But here, right, we, we've got two infantry divisions that are very high strength. We're not going to go on the offensive uh, with, say, this mechanized unit when those are there. Over here, I think we have some opportunity to, again, push through in some select areas. 
and what I'm looking at here is I think we're going to take this third guard's cavalry corps and move it up. And that feels like that was a trap, actually, now that I've done that. And... Okay, so now we have to start thinking about how we can help reinforce them. And if I remember correctly, we were taking the 65th Army, and we were actually pulling it back from the Stalingrad pocket to help reinforce this front line. So now that they're in a position to do so, what I'm actually going to do is take this 4th Tank Corps, and I'm also going to move that up to help reinforce this particular position. And we will now start moving up the 65th Army. Actually, what we might do here is a little bit of a shuffle of units. So I'm going to take the 57th Army. I'm going to have it move over to reinforce this line here. We're going to push this unit. Maybe I'll live to regret that, but we're going to push this unit here to help reinforce this hex. And then we're going to take... It's the 57th Army. Here we have the 21st Army. Where is the 21st Army HQ? Do not tell me it is up there. Oh my goodness. How did I never see that? Wow. Okay. So that that situation has been rectified. Um, <laughs> wow. I think we're also going to take one of these units, probably the 96th rifle, and we're going to move this down to reinforce this hex here. Okay. And then right here we're going to attack, again, to put some pressure on them so they retreat it. And here we're going to attack. They retreat it. So now it's not quite as night and day for them, right, of what they can do. So these are both the 21st Army. So if we... I don't know if that's going to be worth it bringing up the 61st, right, yeah, let's do it. We're gonna bring up the 61st Rifle Division there. Okay. That leaves, again, that little pocket, that little hole there, but I'm I'm okay with that because I don't envision them trying to, to push through and get behind us in that area. Um, and they, they just have a lot of questions, right, of how they're going to defend these gaps in their front line. That's no easy decisions that they're going to have here. I actually think I might move up this unit to put further pressure here. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's fatigue isn't that high either. This also then erases their fortification level here of one. So we're going to do that. Look, more units. What I would kill for some recon here, because that really would have influenced some of the decisions we've made this turn. Darn blizzards. That's what it all comes down to, the blizzards. So now we're going to take the 65th Army, and we're going to start reinforcing the front line here. units up, put that unit here, it's an artillery division we're bringing up there, I actually think we might take up the 65th army there, okay so that's just a Luftwaffe field division. So that's nothing too scary. We're going to move up the HQ again. What is this? This is part of the 5th Tank Army, so we're going to move them this direction because that's where their army is. Okay, so we're, we're, we're in a much more reinforced position now that we've moved the 65th Army down, and we're putting pressure on their lines. 
which is good. What I'd really like is to continue to press here, um, because this, as we advance here, right, if we look at this on a map, advances we make here causes a lot of concern for them in terms of what they do here, because we can get in behind them um, as we work our way uh, east to west, and this then can become, a, I don't want to say encircled, but then it has a much wider front to cover. So we're going to continue being aggressive in this area, and here we're going to continue being a little more static. Actually, yeah, they, they have completely pulled back the army that did exist here last turn, but we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to take a look at Stalingrad, see how Stalingrad's doing. They are all still in supply. So I don't really know that we're going to do a, a gosh darn thing other than maybe move up this stack of 5th tank army. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So those units have been moved up. And then we can probably reinforce here. Just to keep three on each hex. Any of these maybe to swap out. Makes sense. Oh, this is actually part of the 65th Army. So this needs to come down south here. Okay. So let's bring you here. And then we will take this, which is part of the 5th Tank Army, up to reinforce the position that it occupied. And then we have the 2nd Guards Army, which if you remember, we are moving down south here. And this is going to help with our offensive in this pocket. I actually think it's going to make a lot of sense. We can get these right here to put further pressure on this line. So we're moving this stack up. And then this is the HQ unit, which we're going to put here. Okay. Do we have any more from that guard's army? It doesn't look like it. Yeah, that's fifth tank army. We can move you here. Let's just take a look at some of these numbers though and see if it makes sense in any of these to attack on. It's two to one. That's two to one. Here we are. Nope, not even one to one. About here. Two to one. That's fortification level of four. Here we are. Nope, one to one. And not even two to one. Okay. That's fine. So Stalingrad is going to wait another week. Um, it really is just a situation of, you know, they, they cannot bring in enough air supply um, forever <laughs> into this hex. Um, and I really don't want to waste units um, or fighting men attacking this because they, they are in a very fortified and defensive position. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense for us to try to press anything there right now. Moving down south here, though, I think we do have some areas on this front line we can try to take advantage of. So, for example, we have, oh, excuse me. Yeah, we don't even need to use that many of them. Let's take. Which of these units is probably the 304th. And take the 304th. They were routed. Would kind of expect that. Here, that's three to one. So if we add them to it, gives us even better odds. They also route it. And then what happens if we attack here? Oh, not quite enough. We move up this cavalry corps. 
That gives us three to one. They retreat it. So we're going to continue kind of advancing this front line. We're going to move up this HQ unit as well as we do this. We're literally building a new front line here. city in this airfield and we captured a depot it looked like I didn't read the message quite fast enough we can now bring down this HQ unit a little more centrally here what else is it pointing at so we have these two fortified units that are part of this HQ they're gonna stay back there that's fine here we start to get into some units that are a little low on supply, but again, the sooner I can make it up here to their cities where there's actually going to be supply depots, probably the better. So we're going to move a lot of these units up. Okay, so we just came into our first contact there. And it's a pretty strong unit, so we're now going to reinforce this position. Continuing to move this front line up. Let's take them there. And you up. Okay. This is working quite well. Continuing on here, I think we will just head west at this point. Have you kind of take the northern side. All right. Um, let's see what exists here. And there were units there last turn. I don't know where they would have retreated to. We're going to start heading west with these guys to actually get them a little closer to a little closer to their HQ unit. We don't want to head... We, we want to move north here where possible because that gets us into planes. Um, instead of mountainous or hill-like regions. So as much as possible, we do want to move north. And here we're just going to continue this advance down this major rail line. We're going to split that unit off north. go with them. This little stack will go here to that town. I think we'll have them go with them. And continuing to move up our HQ units. have you wander north there and see what you find. Alright, so we've taken that. This is, in a lot of ways, this actually feels a little more difficult not having the enemy in front of you. Um, because you have to try to... Well, the, the, a great unknown that we have right now is just where, where are their armies that were down here, right? Are they sitting in this little pocket ready to break out? Are they um, forming up here along the, the coast of the Sea of Azov to try to 
make you counterattack? I I have no idea. But that's part of the fun of this. We can get this unit pretty far up there if we follow the road. And you'll you'll note too that these units all appear to be very very low on supply. Um yet we're still being a little aggressive with them. That is intentional. Um, while there is no front line that we need to worry about breaking through on, I would rather capture this infrastructure here because the sooner we can start connecting, um, I'm gonna toggle those chips off, the sooner we can start connecting these rail lines um, to our, our, say, industrial centers, the better. Right, so, I mean, the, the huge one is this north-south route that ultimately feeds into Stalingrad, where if we can capture that um, and break through from the north as well, it makes resupply of this entire front here in the south, which will eventually be used to put pressure on Crimea and Rostov, that much easier. I'm going to toggle the ships back on now. And I would guess that this rail unit is frantically looking at where's my little icon it's just the r key i should remember that yeah it's frantically going through saying okay so we um we have some repair work to do look look at this they are all red um but it's so important we do get them repaired we started over here by grozny um to make sure that we continue getting our resupply I actually didn't know it was this bad. I had assumed it was bad, but I didn't know it was this bad. I don't know that it changes my decision making here, though. I might have to look to see if there's anything I can do to influence the, the number of men spent on railroad repair. That'll be some research I'll take away probably after this episode. Uh, let's move you up here. It's just town after town we're capturing. My goodness. Now we need to worry about some of these HQ units. So actually, I can get you up pretty far here. You need to be moved way up to support this advance. And then here we can continue on to this town. Another town captured. Good news. Okay, move you there. And I think we will go up here. I wanted to see, I don't... So this is a fairy hex. I wish I knew what was here. I cannot imagine that they left all of this completely undefended. This stronger unit, though, this rifle corps, is what I'm going to move there. Okay, and that's two to one. If we move you here, three to one. Let's do it. They held. I'm not terribly surprised by that. So now I think we're going to take you off. Should have tried that before. I actually think I might end up taking the 47th Army, or do I do... Maybe I'll end up doing the 56th Army. I think I'm going to take a couple more units over here. I don't know that I'll ever have enough to truly do an assault on Crimea via this ferry, um, but at the very least, if I can get across, this opens up a whole new front um, that the Germans have to deal with. Uh, because the last thing they want is us breaking out into the underbelly of Ukraine, way behind their front lines. Right? 
if they had more than one army in the Crimea defending it, I would be quite shocked. Um, so I think we will then devote at least one army worth of units over here to um, to try to support this. So this is the 56 army. We're going to move the HQ unit back here then. And then next turn I just need to remember to take the units that are part of the 56 army up here and um, bring them south. We're going to take this and we're going to have it reassign. Excellent. Okay. Good stuff there. Good stuff. So I think that I think that does it for all the units that I had to move. So before we close out our turn, one thing that I did want to look at was uh, the mechanic to introduce to the turn, um, and that is building units. So the Soviets actually have the ability to construct new units. The Germans do not. So both nations, when units are, um, you can think of it as surrendered or, or shattered, not, I think shattered actually does come into effect, but, but there's all these mechanisms in place that when a unit is pretty much broken on the field of battle, that it can then come back into the nation's order of battle, rebuilt, reformed, right? Like, the, the commanders made it back to HQ, stragglers were found from the front lines, and then instead of creating an entirely new formation, what was quite historical was you would take that core remnant, remnants of what you did have and say, okay, this division has history in our military, it has a culture, it has a, a, a home base, all of these different things. It makes more sense to just reform this unit, repopulate it with reinforced men, hardware, etc., than it does to just create an entirely new division. The Soviets, though, in this game, have the ability to actually create from scratch new units. And that's what we're going to take a look at here today. Um, you can get to this by using the B key or this icon here, Build New Unit Menu. And what we see is this new window that popped up. And here on the left are all of the different types of units that you could build. And there's, I mean, they're, they're broken up and they're kind of segmented based off of class, right? So here are tank units, mechanized units, rifle divisions, um, artillery and howitzer regiments, etc. anti-tank, engineer. I may have answered my own question earlier on the question of Railroad Construction Brigade, because here they are. So we might actually try to make a few of these. But anyways, these are all the options of what you can create. And I actually am gonna go back here and change this to one, because I was playing around with this earlier. And you simply select the unit that you wanna build, and then that shows and changes what's on the right. So here we would be building a heavy tank regiment, and this is what that heavy tank regiment would have. It would have an armored car. It would have 21 KV-1Ss, which is the Soviet heavy tank. And these things were monsters on the battlefield and really took the Germans by surprise. I'm not saying they were invincible, um, but they really did surprise the German forces. And then down here, you can actually see all of the units that have a heavy tank regiment. So we already see we have the 1st Guards Heavy Tank Regiment, the 2nd Guards, etc. These all exist today in our order of battle. There were three more columns here. One is the cost in um, administrative points that it takes to actually build this. So this appears to have a cost of zero, which is a little interesting as I think about it, but a cost of zero. And this would get deducted here from our administration points which we have plenty of because we have not really been using them with any focus. Uh, we haven't been doing anything that explicitly um, uses up administrative points. The second column is um, called unit, and this is just how many there are today, I believe. So there, there should be 12 listed here. Looks like the math checks out there. And then the last is limit. So to prevent you from from just having hundreds and hundreds of heavy tank regiments and having no light tanks, having no flame tank regiments, just pouring all of your resources into heavy tank regiments, they put a limit 
to try to keep things a little um, realistic and historical in terms of what might make sense to build. So here we cannot exceed having 38 heavy tank regiments, which is a heck of a lot, by the way. And then up here you have two options. One is to build, which actually executes this happening. The second is the number of units to be built. And you can put in any value between one and 10. So if we said 10, it's going to create 10 heavy tank regiments, each of them with 21 KV-1Ss um, and 207 men, okay? We're gonna go back here and we're gonna change this to five. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to build five tank brigades um, because I would really like to build up some tank cores and tank cores require tank brigades. Right now we only have one tank brigade available and I should point out that when you build these, they go to your, your reserve theater box. And if we wanted to build a tank core, we would then take from our reserve theater box three tank brigades that exist to build up a tank core. So we're going to first build up some tank brigades. Um, so we've got five here. Each tank brigade comes with 32 T-34s, 21 T-60s, um, some 76 anti-tank guns, 18 rifle squads, and other support units. And over here in this ground tank pool, by the way, is just numbers available. Um, so you can see we, we have plenty to support this. And we're going to hit build. Too many units. Oh, I already have too many of them. So you see units are at the limit. I did not notice that. So if we just did one. Okay, so we really do have 121 already there. Okay. I actually think I might have clicked that in error twice because I see that we actually now have all of these tank brigades. It does look like it built five tank brigades. So now we're going to go back from our reserves and we're going to go back to that build menu. And let's see now if we can't build one tank core. And SR, I think, stands for the Soviet Reserve Box. The, the W is the Wikipedia, that's what that is. So it doesn't look like we have any that are quite ready to be added, but we do have two tank brigades, so we're going to wait on building out that tank core. Let's switch down, though, to the Railroad Construction Brigade. And here, again, we actually see we can't build any because we're actually already over our limit. Um, I'm not sure how we got over our limit, but there goes my hope of being able to speed up the repair of all of these rail lines that we've been capturing. Okay, very good. Let's maybe look and build some mechanized brigades then. So let's do five of these since it seems like we've already got a couple. And a mechanized brigade, it, it still has some armor in it, um, but really it's focused on increasing the mobility and response of your infantry units with armored support, of course. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build those. So now you see we've added five, and their TOE is now at zero. So these have to build up in the reserve box. We can't just now immediately deploy them from the reserve and imagine that they're going to be effective. Let's also take a look through here, and I, I think I want to get some anti-tank um, forces ready. So those are anti-tank rifles, heavy anti-tank. Actually, maybe I won't do that. So we, it seems like we already have quite a few that are available to us. Okay. Could we do maybe some rifle divisions? Yeah, let, let's build some more rifle divisions. 
We can never have enough ground infantry. So we've added now five more rifle divisions. And now when we look at our reserve theater box, we should see that we have more tanks. We have mechanized units. It actually looks like this is exactly the five that we build. And you see here that their combat value is zero, their TOE is zero, and their morale is 46. So these need to build up while sitting in reserve. Um, and it looks like they're currently on refit, which is good. Combat values depleted. Yeah, so they are on refit. Sorry, I didn't mean to zoom out there on you guys. Um, and I think what we're going to end up doing to, to go back to some of our strategy discussions here, right, is let's start up north and we're going to walk through some of our plans here. With Leningrad, we successfully broke through. We've isolated these two units and we're, it doesn't feel like we're on the defensive anymore. But what I think we do need to do is put some effort into actually breaking through this line right here. So that way we can cut um, east-west to secure this peninsula a little better. So I think that's one thing we need to focus on. The second thing we should focus on is just clearing out this pocket and establishing a more secure front line while also pushing to secure this line of supply because... We talked about this in the previous episode. If we can capture this crossroad, this hex here, and these hex, right, moving north-south, that then gives us rail line supply instead of being stuck in the middle of this swampland. And we can do the same here, kind of north, excuse me, northeast to, to southwest. That then gives us two rail lines worth of supply to have units armies that are effectively supplied on the front line before we push east west to Peskov and Riga right so i think that's kind of our second strategic objective is clear out this pocket and secure this north south rail line um to better be be able to supply and reinforce this offensive that is going to secure Riga right and let's actually just combine those two to say that's strategic um, focus number one, right? And how we're going to deal with what we'll call the, the Leningrad Riga front. Then if we move south, let's take a look here at Smolensk. And Smolensk, I'm, I'm starting to be of the opinion that if we can capture Smolensk, then I think this kind of center group that we have, this Western Front, I think is what it was usually referred to as, um, that they then just can, excuse me, they then continue a push straight on down to Minsk and really start to threaten uh, Germany proper. And at that point, we'd be looking at kind of the historical border of Poland as well as we approach Warsaw, right? If we can work our way through Russia, what is now modern day um, Belarus, with this force, I think that's strategic focus number two. To do that, what we have to first do, so we're gonna turn off the fortification, we're gonna turn off the units. What we first have to do is we have to build up a front line here near Smolensk where these rail situations are repaired. Because we cannot attack something that's gonna be so vital to the Germans as Smolensk if we can't even supply our forces here. We're going to greatly outnumber them. There's no question about that. But if we have no fuel, if we have no resources, it doesn't matter. So that's the first objective we have to achieve this strategic aim. Turning those hexes back on, turning off rail. And then I think the third kind of big strategic objective, again, focuses on the Stalingrad front, where we're just going to look and we're going to be patient. We're slowly going to constrict down in this pocket as they run out of supplies, and we're essentially going to eliminate those forces. Once that is done, all of these armies, we will then move to the front line, and we will continue our push. And I, I, I really do want to maintain that focus that we stressed at the beginning of pushing through what is kind of modern-day Ukraine 
um, first hitting Rostov, but then going down to Odessa, because even though we are kind of tinkering with this in our turn, these armies that we have in the Caucasus front, th this is not going to win us the war. That's not the strength that these things sit at. We're also probably not going to be successful in taking the Crimea with them. I think what we will have to do is cut off the Crimea with these forces that are up here near Stalingrad. Maybe we'll have better success than I envisioned today, um, but in my head, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm not going to declare this some type of strategic view that we have, but I think just an objective we're going to continue along this entire front line is to keep creating gaps, keep creating holes, and to capture Orel and Kursk. But it's not some major offensive that we're focused on. Um, it's just we're going to keep pressing the advantages where we have advantages. All right. So with that, I'm going to hit the end turn button. And we're going to let the Germans have their say in things. This is going through now and going to do the air resupply. While this is happening, I want to talk to a point that I made, I think it was two or three episodes ago, about the Stug 3s and other um, sometimes referred to as tank destroyer units that the Germans had that we kept encountering, where there's, say, small numbers of them attached to infantry divisions and such. And I pointed out that they're not as mobile as Panzer divisions and they... They don't have rotating turrets like a tank does, right? It's just a couple of degrees, 10 degrees probably, left to right for them to aim, and that a lot of times they were used in more defensive positions. I wanted to share that actually I'm, I'm doing some more research on the Eastern Front, and one of the books that I'm reading had an entire chapter dedicated to accounts from German frontline units that were attached to self-propelled guns such as the Stug III, um, the Hetzers, and the Ferdinands, um, and some of the accounts they had really kind of changed the views that I had going into all of this in my past knowledge of, of the role those units served. Especially at the beginning of the war, um, those units really did serve many times as offensive units attached to infantry. And maybe we'll go into some more detail in, in future episodes and some examples and recounts of battles and such to add some history and flavor to the episodes. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify that because it was actually a new learning for me, and I, I don't want to give any false impressions of how those were used. Uh, really quite interesting to hear about how they were a little bit, sacred may not be the right word, but revered and, and instilled confidence in the German infantry when they saw them sitting on the line because of their ability to just uh, really counter and um, obliterate any Soviet armor or defensive positions. And that by the end of the war, there was actually commonplace that they would be used more offensively sometimes than panzer units um, because of their ability to be so offensive, whereas a lot of the panzers outside of, say, panthers and the, the um, tiger tanks uh, had a little bit more punching power, because, uh, I mean, they were mounting 88s on some of these, uh, and if not that, the 75 millimeter anti-tank gun, so really serious firepower behind them. And also we see them so often in our battle recaps attached to infantry divisions and Luftwaffe div divisions, because that is how they were historically used as support brigades, um, where you you might have... Uh, three attached to a regiment and then that those three have their own kind of platoon or two of infantry that actually focused on protecting uh, those self-propelled guns and that's why we keep running into them because they weren't attached historically to panzer divisions proper they were seen as an arm of the artillery divisions now the Germans are moving through their turn and they're doing their air resupply right now and um, momentarily we'll get to see what they attempt to do in terms of counterattacks with their ground forces. That's always the interesting one. And here you see this is just them desperately trying to resupply um, Stalingrad. And they continue to lose airframes doing so, um, both operationally and it looks like we are having some success with anti-aircraft and air superiority fighters. So here we held against a counterattack up near Leningrad. 
Now that's two that we've held up against, so this is good. We need to keep holding here, though. We held, because we don't want those units breaking out. We really want to hold that line. We held once more. I don't know how many more we could take, though. It looks like we're going to end up holding them there. That's wonderful news. Here we actually had three divisions retreat. We were pretty aggressive in that hex the last turn. Um, and there we had one of our units routed. We had kind of started to spread a little more thin that pocket's defenses. Here we lost a rifle division to rout. Um, and here we lost three, my goodness. Uh, but they attacked pretty heavily there with armored fighting vehicles, it looks like. Oh, we weren't able to hold there south of Stalingrad in that hex. I was worried about that. We did hold there, though, so that's good. And it looks like there's some panzer divisions here that are giving us trouble and we're routed. Yeah, this is what I was a little worried about, is they had so many panzer divisions down there that they're, they're going to be quite capable of counterattacking for a while, I think. Here we held. This is back up towards Smolensk again. And once again held. These are some quite heavy battles that I'm, I'm excited to do a recap of in the next episode. The Germans are a little more active than they have been in past turns, which is curious. They're now 30% through their turn, and I think they're about done with their counterattacks with ground forces. Yep, looks like it. So now they're going to start just repositioning their front lines, making sure they have the right units where they need them. Um, and then lastly, we'll end up with our logistics phase before it gets to the next turn. German rail repair. What railroads could they possibly be repairing? We're capturing all the railroads. They have none. A couple more air resupplies, it looks like. It's pretty insightful, though, that they're doing that, because that tells us that there must be some forces there that we're about to cut off with our advance of infantry. Interesting. Now it's back to our turn, going through the logistics phase here. I do hope I click that AI uh, Supply Depot Assist button. I don't know that I did this last turn. Hopefully that doesn't give us any trouble. We are now officially in turn 7. It is December 31st, 1942. So after this turn, we are in 1943. And that's where we're really going to be able to kick up and, and push the Germans back, which is a pretty historical uh, timeline too. So almost wrapped up with this phase. I think last turn we had 44 units that were of low supply. And I'm curious what that's going to be now. Because we have continued to push out, and we saw a number, a number of situations where our railroads were, were, were hurting. Okay, so here's a recap of the turn. Total of 63,000 losses. Again, that's staying right at about the average of 60,000. 990 gun platforms. 425 armored fighting vehicles and 344 airframes again feels awfully high considering we're not doing any type of ground support or anything like that given the air conditions order of battle changes in net we lost 25,000 men 1600 guns 195 armored fighting vehicles and 34 airframes our theater box is pretty much all saw growth though aside from the airframes and then the Germans have stayed pretty close to net zero on a lot of these. The one change that this has not been the trend for the last couple turns is they saw a growth of 417 of our armored fighting vehicles. Normally we've been about flat or gaining 100, and they've been losing about 100 per turn. So that was a, that's a swing that's a little alarming if it continues. We see that we have 56 units on low supply, so that's about 12 higher than the previous turn. 38 that are under strength, and 16 that are unready. So 
if things continue to stay interesting, we'll close out of that and let's take a look at our news events. So it looks like the Germans have had some success in North Africa. Um, so that that's unfortunate for us because that means that um, they must have put more units in the theater box there and it's working, uh, which means they're going to have less pressures elsewhere. I am a little curious by the historical image that's attached to that event, though, because I don't know about you guys, but that looks an awful lot like a carrier. And I don't, I don't recall hearing about any carriers lost in the Mediterranean that were supporting North Africa. Maybe there was, though, around events in Malta and such? I might have to look that up because curiosity has struck me now. That, any other user, I feel like you would, you would look at that image and say, oh, the Pacific, a carrier is sinking, right? Um, but I'm, I'm going to have to do some research on that one. And then we see that Soviet partisan activity continues in German-occupied territory, um, which is the same event that we've had for a number of turns now. So that's going to wrap this episode up. Really looking forward to the next two episodes as we handle turn seven. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to watch these videos, and hopefully you've been enjoying this game as much as I have. Uh, if you care to please like or subscribe the channel as it helps raise awareness to the game and to these videos to, to help people get into playing such a complicated game and if you have any questions or feedback for the videos please add them in the comments and i'll be sure to try to address them as best i can with that wishing all of you a wonderful day take care bye now